question. The last part of it, the account from personal experience, actually, I've never told anybody about it. So this, <coughs> you are the first audience to hear. I didn't realize when I agreed and kept talking about it, that there would also be some of my uh, art colleagues from the Danish Podcasting Hall who present here in the room. But I haven't changed my speech due to that. Uh, well, this is a very, very complicated picture <coughs> of on how many all the sites of the broadcast is making compromises in the surrounding. I'm not going to talk all about these issues. Only the three arrows at the left. That the state is having some kind of legitimate performance control over public broadcasting, that public broadcasters, as one of their main goals, should be controlling public services, the state, government, and also the fact that governments can't always refrain from using their power to influence the editorial work at broadcasters. So this is the three main issues. On the first hand, we must realize that governments and parliaments, as representatives of our audience, have a fully legitimate right to make some kind of controls. Also, that public broadcasters have uh, the obligation to be the watchdog of society, controlling government and parliament. And so on. But we can see uh, that in some countries, anyway, governments are tempted to misuse that controlling power to to make, you know, to try to intervene in the uh, public service integrity and autonomy in their electoral processes. I will very, very briefly touch all the formal structures because you can, you can illustrate this issue by looking at the formal structures, the law, rules, uh, the independent regulatory and so on, and you can look at the informal differences. And very often you can read the laws from uh, Bulgaria and uh, uh, Russia and Italy and Spain and so on, and you will find the laws and the text of the laws just as good as those in Denmark and Germany and Sweden and so on, and even Finland. It's not the formal law that has to make the big difference. It's the reality from day to day. Here you have an example of a survey made primarily on the formal rules. And you can say that if you look at the top, that's where you have the strongest government control and you have the, the least independence. Here you have Italy. And at the bottom you have Germany. So, with a very broad picture, this actually shows some very relevant differences. Because the experiences from the 1930s in Germany, 1930s and 40s, had made the law, the system in Germany, securing a very high level of independence for the public broadcasters. Yes. As you all know, that in Italy is different. You can also see that Finland is closer to Germany than Denmark, for instance. So it might not be absolutely correct picture. <laughs> <laughs> and here you have another way of illustrating it. It's, uh, it's a little commercial because Greg Farrell and me are editing a book that this will be presented. And here you have, on the left-hand side, the, the, the formal independence measurement, where you have Finland a bit above the average, above the blue line. You have France and Italy further below. If you go to the right-hand side, you have the de facto independence measure. For instance, here, let's make an index illustrating if you have a shift in government, and then you go six months later, and you then see also a shift in the director general in office. And those countries who are at the bottom here, they have typically, when they shift government, they shift public broadcaster management. Those at the top are different. And you can see that here, Finland has moved around the globe. So it might not be an accurate picture. 
because you know that even in Finland, that's not like in Sweden and other countries, you actually shift director generals, but it doesn't take place within six months. You wait a couple of years. That was about the the uh, the formal the formal issues. And now about the the inform, the day, the, the reality of day to day. Here you have the clouds, uh, the, the, the European map. And although, as I mentioned, you can read all the formal texts, you have fine works of independence in the <coughs> uh, reality is often very, very different. Uh, public funding is very often in several European countries is tied closely uh, to be more neutral and objective. <coughs> when you say neutral and objective here, it's of course on the line close to the political line of government. You have in some countries public service broadcasters actually acting as an arm of the public relation work of government and political parties. During the, the beginning of the Iraq war, some several public broadcasters was actually provided with editorial handcuffs, as we saw in the United Kingdom, and as I later explain also in Denmark. Then you have, typically in the Eastern European countries, a very, very close handcuffs put on public broadcasters. Management are shifting. When I travel in these countries, every year I meet a new director general or a new head of news department. Why, why, this is my impression that this problem is growing, in the, it has been growing in the last couple of years, last five to ten years, why? And I'll give you some of the explanations. For the first reason is that the political discourse has changed in most countries. That uh, the policy of government is now using communication in a completely different way where the communication itself has been part of policy. That the political initiatives are often tested uh, on the basis of their communicative uh, quality. So that, that to create a positive press is a very important tool in government politics. That's where spin doctors are coming in for instance. And also, if, if, when I was a child, political parties had their own newspapers. And that has changed rapidly in most European countries, that very few, you, you might have left-wing or right-wing newspapers, but they are not affiliated as closely to political parties as they used to do. And then, being a government, being a political party, having lost your own newspaper, <coughs> you tend to consider the public broadcaster as your own. You being the state, the state-owned public broadcaster is considered your own. You can, you can read about these developments in the sources I have mentioned here. <coughs> of course, the, uh, the television across Europe, uh, which came in two editions, and the last one in 2008, with the subtitle, More Channels, Less Independence. It's a very interesting book. And we are, I'm, I'm working for the Open Society, and we are right now planning a follow-up in, as mentioned, 60 countries in the Far East, Africa, South America, and Europe. What is the message used by governments? I'm just listening at a few of them here. <coughs> Limiting the funding, setting strings to the fund, saying, if you <coughs> want to be sure to get your license fee or your tax money next year, you must do these and these changes. Setting up very tight public service broadcasting contracts with detailed rules on what to broadcast and what not to broadcast. You also have the direct intervention in program. When the minister, as I have been, uh, you know, I have uh, a couple of times, a handful of times, the minister has called directly to me when I was a doctor and said, you, We want you to stop this and this or you will, we want you to broadcast these things. And you also have this more subtitle, good advice, uh, you know, not directly threatening, just mentioning 
we would be happy if you would consider so-and-so.